Hi, thank you for tuning in to the Tom Patelson Show. Yeah, let's talk about vampires. Vampire movies is one of my favorite genres. I'm usually in for any vampire movie that comes out. I will most likely go see it. And when it came time to try and come up with this list, I just typed in vampire movies to see what I'd miss because I knew off the top of my head which ones I loved. Uh, but my goodness, there's a lot. I have no doubt of that someone out there will see this and say, why didn't you mention this? Well, I've only, I only picked 10. There were 16 on my original list, and I'll let you know which ones didn't make the top 10. But yeah, vampire movies. In honor of Halloween. So let's jump right in. Number 10 comes from 1987. It is Near Dark. If you haven't seen Near Dark and you're a vampire fan, please, please watch this. It's a fantastic, it's a, how do I put that? It's a, it's a cult following. It's a cult following. I don't think it did very well in the theaters. It stars Adrian Pastor, Jenny Wright, Lance Hendrickson, Bill Paxton, and Jeanette Goldstein, who you might know better as Bishop Hudson and Vasquez, who shot Aliens one year earlier. It's a typical love story thing. Uh, he's not a vampire. She wants him to be a vampire so they can live together forever. Hey, you want to come and live to me with me for the rest of time? and Everything's going to be great. Well, is there any downside? Uh, almost none. It's violent, it's gritty, bloody, it's really good, it's action-packed, it's, a, yeah, Near Dark from 1987 is number 10. Oh, so good. Number 9. I have read every single vampire novel Anne Rice has written. If it's got a vampire in it, I've read it. I've read her entire catalog of vampire. I've read all the Vampire Chronicles. So from 1994, Interview with the Vampire with Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, Antonio Banderas, Kirsten Dunst, and Christian Slater at all. It's a decent adaptation. Uh, the current uh, miniseries on AMC is a better one. And not to bag on Tom Cruise, but it's got a better Lestat. Nobody wanted Tom Cruise's Lestat when it first came out. I remember all the, the hubbub from 94. But still, Interview with the Vampire is a good movie for vampires. And it is number nine. Number eight. I'm just going to apologize. I'm just going to apologize because I can't believe this is on my list, but it was so fun and so goofy and so silly and I don't care. It is Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter from 2012. Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. It's fun. It's inventive. I believe it's based on a graphic novel. I didn't read that one. But I like the whole idea, how they weave it into history, this hidden, dark thing that's always been there but nobody wants to talk about. And it's entertaining. It's entertaining and fun. And he wields an axe. You know, how fun is that? Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter is number eight. Number seven is a part of a series. And there's a lot of movies in the series, but you can skip almost all of them. You can watch number one and number three. This is number three. It is Underworld Rise of the Lycans. Now I know what you're saying, but that's a werewolf movie, and it is. It's a movie about werewolves. Lycans are werewolves, from lycanthrope, uh, yeah, to transform, to turn into a werewolf, but it's all about the war between the vampires and the werewolves, and this is their origin story, how the Lycans rise to power through Lucian, who is played by Michael Sheen, and opposite him, his bride, uh, the vampire, played by uh, Rona Mitra, and her dad, or yeah, uh, Bill Nighy. Bill Nighy is Victor in both Underworld and Rise of the Lycans. But I do love a good, I do love the heroic, it's like watching Gladiator. It's like watching Gladiator, but with werewolves. It's entertaining, it's, it's, it's graphic, it's fun. There are huge battle scenes, yeah. Rise of the Lycans is number seven from 2009. Number six is an emotional favorite. I didn't see it in 1979, I was only 10 years old. I saw it in the 90s when I was in college and I saw it with my girlfriend at the time. Well, she wasn't my girlfriend at the time, she was a, a, a good friend and we had a wonderful date while watching um, Frank Langella's Dracula from 1979 with Laurence Olivier playing Helsing. It's the first vampire movie I can remember where being a vampire appeared to be pretty sexy. There's a lot of sex appeal in this movie, it's talking about you know, being the, the Count. A lot of the other movies did, did portrayed them as monsters, just straight monsters, and this is the first time. It's, it's very romantic, and it's all very, very 1970s, is how it's shot and whatnot, and the smoke and everything. Yeah, but I, I do love it. From 1979, number six is Franklin Langella's 
Dracula. Number five. Number five is a vampire movie that you don't know is a vampire movie for, I think, the good for a good half an hour to 45 minutes. You're like, what is this movie about? And then suddenly it explodes into a wonderful vampire movie written by Quentin Tarantino, directed by Robert Rodriguez. It is From Dusk Till Dawn. Uh, I don't have a year on that. I don't know when that year was. It's right here. Uh, starring George Clooney, Quentin Tarantino, Juliet Lewis, and Harvey Keitel, amongst others. And it is so fun. From Dusk Till Dawn is very fun and bloody and action-packed. It's like watching uh, Desperado, but with vampires. Uh, a lot of great dialogue, a lot of silly scenes. Oh, boy. From Dusk Till Dawn is a great vampire movie, and it falls to number five. Number four. So we've gone to romantic, to goofy fun, to flat-out horror, terror, back to being the monsters they are. From 2007, it is 30 Days of Night. 30 Days of Night, uh, adapted from the graphic novel, I'll have to read this off my list, uh, from Steve Niles and Ben Templesmith, who did the original graphic novel, starring Josh Hartnett, Ben Foster, and Danny Houston plays the lead vampire. The graphic novel I've read and the movie doesn't do, uh, they don't do one of the subplots from the novel, which is, if you don't know the plot, I'll give it real brief. Uh, there were 30 days of darkness in Alaska, so the vampires decide, well, let's just go there. No sunlight for 30 days, we'll feast. And they wind up feasting on everything inside and eat everybody in the town. The subplot in the original graphic novel is that one of the other vampires says, uh, this is dumb. We shouldn't be here killing everybody. We should still be trying to be sneaky. Otherwise, we're going to run out of food. And then for I don't know how many days, we're stuck here. We're completely stuck here. This is dead, but that's not in the movie. But the movie is, it's a true horror movie where they're holed up, a small group of survivors, and they keep getting picked off and whatnot. It's really creepy. It's really terrifyingly fun. I do love 30 Days of Night, and that is number four. Number three. I was born in 1969, that makes me Generation X, and I graduated high school in 1987, which means I am obligated, for whatever reason, that I must put the Lost Boys on this list. I love the Lost Boys. It is such a fun, good vampire movie with Jason Patrick and Keith Sutherland and Jamie Gertz and uh, who am I missing? And the Corys. And the Corys are in it. Corey Haim and Corey Feldman. It is 88 minutes long. You're in, you're out. It's fun. It's got a great soundtrack. I watched it during the pandemic and I haven't seen it in quite a while. And there's a lot of this movie that doesn't hold up very well. Like the plot doesn't seem to fit and what the vampires do doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And who cares? It's the 1980s. It's got good rock and roll music and it's got the, it's got the guy, it's got the shirtless saxophone player. Don't think I'm not going to mention that. Don't think I won't because I did. The Lost Boys. Oh. The Lost Boys is number three, absolutely. Number two. Number two. He walks in both worlds. He's got all of their strengths, but none of their weaknesses. He is a sword-swinging badass from 1998. Wesley Snipes is Blade. Oh, <laughs> what? Blade. If I do my list tomorrow, Blade's number one. It was really difficult to pick one and number two, but I know I know me, but Blade will be number one tomorrow. Blade is so good, and that opening scene in in the subway at the party, and you know, at the rave, at the vampire rave—that's what it is. I don't know what else to call it—the vampire rave or the first opening action scenes. Oh, oh, it's so good. Uh, Stephen Dorff plays the bad guy, and Chris Christopherson is there to play Whistler, and uh, Blade. Blade is so. G I remember reading Blade, the Vampire Hunter um, comic when it was part of the Rise of the Midnight Sun series uh, from the 1990s, along with Ghost Rider and Morbius and some of the other Rise of the Midnight Suns. Blade is so entertaining and so fun. Uh, part two and part three, fine, but it's no number one. Blade is my favorite vampire movie that falls to number two, 1998, which just leaves us with number one. 
But before we do number one, I'm going to tell you the, the ones that didn't make it. I also put in Fright Night, Shadow of the Vampire, the 1931 Dracula with uh, Bela Lugosi, and Bram Stoker's Dracula, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, Salem's Lot, the miniseries from the early 1980s starring David Soul, and Let the Right One In, either the Swedish version or the American version, both are very good. I saw the Swedish version uh, with the subtitles. Fantastic. But... They fell. They they fall. They fell further down on my list. It was not uh, on my list of ten. Number one. Number one is Underworld, from 2003, with Kate Beckinsale, Michael Sheen, Bill Nighy, and Scott Speedman. It is vampires versus werewolves in modern day. It is all very gothic and black leathery. It's always raining. It's always dark. There doesn't seem to be any sunshine. It is action-packed. It's not very vampire-y, because everybody's shooting. There's lots of guns and lots of shooting and whatnot. It's mostly weapons. But at the end of it all, it is a brilliantly fun vampire movie. And Bill Nighy as Victor is the best performance. It's the best performance in that movie is Bill Nighy as Victor. It is so good and entertaining, rivetingly fun. I could watch it right now. I could watch it anytime. That and Blade flip-flop to one and number two. Post in the comments what I missed, because I know I missed a bunch. I know I missed a bunch that you were going to say, why didn't you record that? Why did you put that? And you're right. I'd be like, yeah. There's always going to be one that I miss and always one that I love. So please do let me know what I miss so I can comment on that. But those are my top 10 favorite vampire movies. It's time for a shout out. This one comes from my video about ranking the Batman movies. Zephram says, I know you wanted to limit the animation movies, but I would have added Mask of the Phantasm. Yeah, me too. Me too, absolutely. Batman Mask of the Phantasm was our first introduction to Batman the Animated Series with Kevin Conroy as Batman. Rest in peace, Kevin Conroy. A superior Batman. Fantastic. And the first time we get to hear Mark Campbell as the Joker. It's a great one. It is. And I absolutely, yeah. If we were going to do just animated movies, because then you unlock all of the other animated DC movies out there that are out there, and uh, I'd have to rank those. It might be a separate video. But as far as Batman Mask of the Phantasm, I agree with you. 100%. That'll do it for this week and my favorite vampire movies. Thank you for tuning in. Like and subscribe if you like this content and hit that notification bell if you, so you know when my stuff drops. It drops on Sunday. Let me know what you're geeking out about. Let me know you're a nerd and let's, let's talk about the things we love. Science fiction, pop culture, philosophy, board games, you name it, I'm all in. Till I see you next time. Peace, love, live long and prosper.